Hello everyone and welcome to Moya Mix Hub. This is part two in a series of videos where we're having a visual look at compressor attack times. If you haven't seen part one, there's a link on the screen now. Go and have a look at it. We're using a test tone in that particular video. On this one, we're using a kick sample. Right, what I've got for you is a kick drum sample that's normalized to zero dB. If we look on the meters, we're getting zero. Okay, the compressor we're gonna use is the same as in the previous example, the built-in digital compressor that comes with Logic, purely because it works on pure maths, no saturation, no anomalies, nothing weird, it's just doing its thing, okay? And if we quickly look at the settings, I've got zero attack on at the moment, hard knee setting, fastest release, no makeup gain, two to one ratio, zero threshold. And first of all, we'll run it in peak mode. Okay. We've got zero dB signal here. So if I press play at this point, the compressor is on. Reset the meters. We get zero. Okay. As you'd expect, got nothing going above threshold. But if I put minus 20 in there, we've now got 20 dB above threshold, two to one ratio. So therefore 20 divided by two is 10. So we should get 10 dB gain reduction. And if I reset the meters here, yeah, there you go. We've got 10 dB of gain reduction as you'd expect. But like in the previous example, if I flick to RMS mode and we flick that and we reset the meters here, you'll see we're back to zero. Even though we're at zero milliseconds attack, we've still got zero in the meters because RMS mode won't pick up on the fast transients at the beginning of the sound. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bounce out as I did before, some various settings, five, 10, 20 milliseconds in both peak and RMS mode. And let's see what it's doing to this kick drum. Right, here they are side by side. And as you can see, the peak ones are in green at the bottom, going from zero up to 100 milliseconds. And the peak one, uh, the RMS ones, sorry, are here in brown, zero to 100 milliseconds. So we can see what's going on there as we increase the attack time, the shape of the attack sh changes. You can see it's not waiting, like we said last time, the compressor doesn't wait for that period before it does anything, it starts compressing straight away. It's just how long it takes to do that compression. And if we grab all these, and overlay them over that kick, you can see that the RMS attack times are longer for the same value than the peak attack times. Let's have a listen to them. So what we've got here are the peak settings on the bottom, zero to 100 milliseconds, and the RMS settings on the top, zero to 100 milliseconds. So let's just have a listen to them in order to see what they actually sound like. If we listen to the peak ones first, Yeah, you can hear the attack gradually getting bigger and fuller as we as we go down the line. If we listen to the RMS ones. Now, that initial slappy transient at the beginning is there in every one of those. But what you'll hear as we go down the line is the sort of mids and the low mids of the kick sound become more prominent. Yeah, you can hear that. One thing to also notice here is people say that, you know, you're using the compressor to make a sound louder, but in RMS mode here, I can't physically turn these sounds up anymore. They're already at zero dB. Even at zero milliseconds, the actual initial transient is zero dB. I'm not controlling the transient. This kick drum has got quieter compared to the original sample. This one could turn up, this one could turn up. You know, these later ones couldn't. So when you, when you are, obviously you would, shouldn't be using zero dB normalized signals in your mix. They should, should have headroom, so you can push them like that. But bear in mind that these peaks are gonna go with them. These peaks might be triggering on your meter and make you think that you've got an excess signal where you don't really need all this peak. Now you could use a fast compressor to remove the peak. And some people do that. They use a, a slower compressor to get the um, signal to where it is, and then a fast compressor to shave the peak off. Or you could use an, a limiter that would reduce them, or you could use saturation that will also reduce it in a more natural way. And people tend to do that, tape saturation or something like that, to shave the peaks off. And that was one of the things between analog and digital when the move over was made from tape into the digital realm. Pe things were a little bit too sharp and transient. And when tape saturators came out, they started to pull those transients back again and make them feel more natural. Next up, I've taken the 
sample here and I've pulled out uh, a couple of peak values and a couple of RMS values. And what I've done on the sample track here, the where the kick sample is, I've put a series of EQs. And what I'm going to do, this value here is coming into audio 34. So I'm going to do a match EQ. So I'm going to compare the EQ of this sample to this particular bounce via this match EQ method that's built into the fab filter EQ. Because when you're compressing all you in a sample like this, a fixed sample, which is the same on repeat, all you're doing is EQ in the sound. So we'll have a look at what actually EQ curve we're creating with, for example, a 20 millisecond peak. So here are the EQ curves. So if we just take a look at the first one here, which is so 20 millisecond peak. So it's a pretty fast attack time. Okay, and that's what the EQ curve looks like for that. Okay, then we get a longer attack time, 100 milliseconds, and that's what the EQ curve looks like for that. And as you'll notice, the 20 millisecond one only preserves this sort of, this part of the EQ. And then it starts to reduce the signal thereafter. Whereas this protects a little bit more of the frequency range because it's a longer attack and then starts reducing at a, at a sort of, shallower angle here. This is a deeper angle if you look, and then a shallower angle. And then if we do the same for the RMS, 2.5 and 100 milliseconds, we can see the 2.5 RMS protects this. And that's basically all you're doing. And I'll, I'll show you how simple this is. If I just clear those out and I come to here and I take, uh, let's take this end one, which is this EQ here and uh, just switch it on for the end one, get rid of it. And if I bounce that out now with that EQ on, so I'll just put the uh, EQ. Well, let's go and have a look how it compares to what the compressor's done. And you can see just EQing it is doing pretty much what the compressor's doing. If I take that value there and drag it over, okay, there's some little differences. The match EQ is not exact, but that's pretty much what that EQ is doing in that compressor. So you could argue you could either use an EQ or a compressor to do exactly the same thing in this particular circumstance. To grab this concept, you've got to really think about how a sound is made. And that's usually with the higher frequencies at the front end of the sound and the lower frequencies further back in the sound as time progresses. So if we take this kick sample, for example, this kick sample, for example, I like that. Okay, let's take a look. I'll just zoom in here and I've just slithered it into cycles. So if I open that first cycle, you see this is the very, very first part of the sound. Okay, here. Okay, so that very first cycle is doing that. Let's go in here and have a look. So the next cycle. Is down here. We're already at one and a half kilohertz, even this far in to this particular sound. Next one, less than one kilohertz, 600 hertz, 400 hertz, and etc. etc. You can see we're going down as you'd expect. The kick, a kick drum sound goes, doesn't it? What I'm trying to prove is all that frequency range happens in this first little bit of the kick drum sample. The sample is way longer than that, but most of it is sub. So if we look at this, these examples here, where we've got a, a kick, a 100 millisecond peak compression on, you can see the compressors going down here. It's always going to leave these initial high frequency and not necessarily high sort of, you know, here we were, uh, we were at below a thousand kilo, about a thousand hertz at this point. So it's leaving all this, probably that's the same as well. So, you know, everything 600 hertz up there is untouched because of we've got a, uh, this attack time. We're always going to be turning down the back end of the signal, which is generally the lower frequencies. This can be explained a little better if we have a look at a null test. So what I've got here, Got two sounds exactly the same, a compressor on each. So we've got two compressors, one on each, and one of the phases is inverted. So whatever these compressors are set to the same value, they will cancel each other out. So I just zoom down there and we press play. 
You can see they're operating, but they're cancelled out. So what we can do now is I can alter the attack and we can listen to what the attack is actually doing. Okay, and if I bring an EQ across here, we can see what frequencies in this particular sound are being affected. We're at two and a half milliseconds there and we're already getting one kilohertz of signal. So that's what you're listening for. When you're listening for the attack, you're listening for that particular addition, if you like. It's not really an addition. You, what you're actually doing is you're actually subtracting the other stuff. That's staying the same. So when you're listening, if you want a slappier sound, you want a quick attack. You know, if you want that slappier sound there, if you want more of the sort of lower woody sort of sound, you want a faster, uh, a slower attack down there. So it depends what kind of transient you're looking to to get. And obviously, if you want to get rid of the transient, then you want a really fast attack. Now let's go have a look at some classic compressors, just a, a couple of examples. So this is what the 1176 looks like. You can see it's just leaving the, it's on the slow setting, it's just leaving the initial transient reasonably untouched and then squashing everything else. If we go to the next one, DBX160, again, it's doing a similar kind of job. We know this is an RMS compressor. Uh, so this is working in a slightly different way to the 1176. And then if we look at the uh, API 2500, see this is a, it's on 30 milliseconds here. And as you can see, it's a much shallower attack. So this is leaving a lot more of the low mids and the um, uh, mids themselves intact. Let's compare those side by side. Classics versus Logic. Okay. So we've got the 1176 on the slow setting, and I would say that lines up nicely with this five millisecond peak from this Logic compressor. Yeah, it's not too far. The peaks are a little bit bigger. Could argue it's somewhere between five and ten millimeter uh, millise five and ten milliseconds. Okay, next we've got the DBX160, which you could argue is mm, yeah, probably ten milliseconds there. RMS mode. Okay, and then we've got the API here, which is pretty much the equivalent of that one there, which is what we've got in the API. We've got 30 milliseconds on the API, which is similar to a 100 milliseconds RMS on, the, on a digital compressor, on the Logic digital compressor. And like I've said before, 30 milliseconds on one, is, it could be the same as 100 milliseconds on another, like we've seen here. Always use your ears, never set up by theory or maths or however. And finally, I've done a match EQ comparing the original sample to those three classic compressors. So if I go to here, we can have a look first of all at the 1176, where the 1176 is a fast compressor. So you expect it to just leave the high frequencies intact and then start turning down all the other frequencies. And you can see from that EQ curve, that's exactly what it's done. If we look at the next one, which is the um, DBX, that's left a little bit more of the frequency range intact. I just turned down sort of from 1K, started to turn it down from there. And then if we look at the API, which is a much slower attack, it's left most of the stuff intact here and just turned the subs down. Okay, again, a fun way of looking at the attack times of a compressor and comparing them to see what you're looking for. Now that was on a kick sample in the next video we're going to have a look at what the attack time does to a bass guitar. So stick around for that. You will see me in the next video. Like this, share this. What else are you supposed to do with it? Nominate me for a Grammy. Uh, no, um, I genuinely have forgot. Subscribe, that's it. Subscribe and send me chocolates. Okay, thank you very much. And until next time, I'll s you'll see me then. Goodbye.